Well, you know, I kind of it kind of gets back to this thing where you come out of life with no boundaries and life is just throwing you around. And and in my case, you know, I had demons coming out of me. I, I was had panic attacks. I, I saw this man that would follow me around, yes. which was completely in my imagination. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it was just all this post-traumatic stress because I had no idea that that's what it was. Um, but my life was just crashing and burning. <laughs> so I think I, I look back and I think, well, I had no choice. You know, I, I couldn't even function. Um, mm. And I had two little kids and I was not going to let their lives be, be damaged by me. I just was not going to let it happen. And so that's when I, I realized you know, and then it finally I allowed it in my in my daily life that that I had been molested by my father. And I had no idea before that I, you know, I kept it completely away from my consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, then I was absolutely devastated and I had to do it. It was either mm -hmm. that or commit suicide and die. I mean, you know, I, I think our mental capacity starts failing us, doesn't it? Yeah. We we don't yeah. have enough mental capacity to keep it down. You just can't and keep it down any longer. Can't keep it down any longer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's how I felt like, um, was sink or swim, you know? Um, I don't know if I had, if I didn't have kids looking at me and needing a mommy, um, you know, I don't know how, if I would have gotten through it because it, it yes. was so, so I always hard. say that to my kids. Yeah. I don't know if I would have had enough love for myself. Yes. For myself. Right. That's right. Exactly. I don't that's know right. if I would have had enough love, but Kevin certainly found the love for himself. Kevin, talk to us a little bit about what that looked like for you when you said, I'm going to step into healing and it's time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm overly transparent. So I got to the point of promiscuity where I was a nymphomaniac and I did not want to be that person. And I knew that sex had overtaken my life. And each time I would feel more guilty, more condemned and miserable. And I'm like, why do I keep, you know, repeating this and hurting myself? And I knew I was in trouble when I would say, OK, I'm not going out tonight under any circumstances. Two or three hours later, guess where I'm at? where I shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that it was going to take a divine strength to help me. Now, I did not get delivered in that moment, but I think God was setting it up like, okay, he's finally, mm -hmm. he's finally, you know, coming to his senses. And I said, God, I don't know how I got here, but I mean, we really do know how we got there because we right. continue in sin, and then it be it overtakes us. We think our, we're stronger our, than what we are. Right. No, well, you can't play with the devil. You can't play with right. none, none of his stuff. Um, but I'm talking about as an adult. Right. I knew right from wrong, and I knew that there was a such thing as deliverance, but I didn't wholeheartedly seek it. So mm -hmm. when I, you know, when it overtook me, I said, God, I don't know when and I don't know how but you got to help me. And it was a little bit after that, that it finally happened. Um, so for me, I had a divine encounter. And when I say divine encounter, it's like one night I went to bed. Nope. Let me take this back. How it all started. Um, I was going to marry a man and we were going to move out of state to a gay affirming state, you know, and get married and adopt a kid and buy a dog and buy a house to hold nine yards. But for some reason, I didn't feel 100% confident about it. I said, this is strange. When I went to bed, I said, am I making the right decision? You know, because as a child being abused, I know that your decisions not only affect you. So I said, should I be marrying a man? Should I buy a house with a man? Should I raise a child as two men? You know, it's just all these questions. And I say, Lord, what's the right thing to do? And why did I ask that? <laughs> the next I'm day, sorry, I, I had a different. Listen, mm -hmm. Jody, why did I ask that? Right. The next day, 
when I woke up, I had clear vision. When I say clear, I'm not talking about natural. I'm talking about spiritual. I understood what Jesus meant, and I heard from the Holy Spirit clear. It was like a miracle, and I knew that that lifestyle was not right for me. I said, I don't, I don't have a heaven and hell to put somebody else in, but I'm only telling you my personal convictions. I knew that that lifestyle was not right, and it goes against the order and the creation of God. And so I said, you got to help me with this. And he said, I'm going to bring you out of it. He said, and I'm going to use you and your story to help so many people get free because everybody in that lifestyle does not necessarily want to be in it. They don't know how to come out of it. And then there's the lies that people have been told that God made you this way. Once gay, always gay. Um, it doesn't matter who you love, you know, live your truth. All that stuff is not, that's not God's plan. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. If God's in, okay, everything God does do is life, right? So he said, be fruitful and multiply. Did he not say that? How can two men or two women be fruitful and multiply? They can't. They're trying to create it scientifically now, but that's not what God created. So you can't undo what he's already created. But I'm saying that to say, if everybody lived their truth and decided to do women with women and men with men, society would cease. There would be no fruit. There would be, the, the earth would depopulate. So when God gave me that truth, it just blew my mind. Because I said, he said, can two men produce the life that I said to be more full, you know, to multiply? I said, no. He said, well, then I couldn't possibly be in it. He said that I couldn't have possibly created something that goes against my plan for mankind. I said, whoa. Well, and, you know, I love when you said, Jody, why did I ask? I think the reason we ask God for help is because just that we need help. And and we know that it's outside of our strength. I know I have found myself in situations. Completely Kevin, out. You know what I mean? Just drunk and with married men and going to work with hangovers or still drunk and really, really needed help outside of what I could do. You know, who I am today is not who I've always been. And so, you know what, I'd ask God, <laughs> or I wouldn't ask God if I wanted to stay where I was because I knew he'd help me. Like I had this sense that he would help me and he did indeed help me. It's not an overnight transformation. And I certainly had to show up and put my work in. But um, I just have to smile when you said, Jody, why did I ask? Because I know I've asked too. And sometimes in my mind, I go back and forth and think about the drastic changes in my life that he has helped me complete that I could have never done on my own. I don't know. It's kind of like, Carol, what you were just saying. I don't know who I would have been had he not intervened. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him consistently come find me, even sometimes when I didn't ask. And I'm so thankful for that. So <laughs> anyway, I just had to go back to that, Kevin, because I just, I love your spirit around that. Because it's like, why did I ask? <laughs> yeah. But you know, the truth is, is where oh, I don't God, think, that, I don't was, think, it, it was, I, I don't think that we feel no, I don't think we feel satisfied and whole there. I mean, I could have continued to kept finding another person to get into some terrible relationship with. And what that did was make me where I didn't have to really look at my own past, you guys. It kept me running. And so my healing took so much longer because I was constantly running and recreating my abuse instead of stopping my abuse and then making choices as a result of what I chose. Mm-hmm. That's right. I totally agree. If there's a, there's a, you know, the thing with the victim, victimhood is that we have to be accountable for anything. If oh, everything is so somebody true. else's fault and all oh, what they did, oh, they did this and that. 100%. And I can't find love. And, you know, that, that's, that's a, an escape goat. Because in it's every relationship, outside say. of being abused, we teach people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. If you let the man knock you upside the head one time, what do you think he's going to keep doing? 
Mm. So there's a, I'm not making, I'm not excusing it or saying abuse is okay in any circumstance. It's not. But a lot of times we allow this stuff and then we want to play the victim. You have a choice of who you lay down with. You have a choice to have this person in life or to block them. You know what I mean? Block, delete. You know, uh, and, restraining and honestly, order. right in my life, I have to say, um, I think what God does is give us clear definitions of left or right. And then we have to choose that left or right. And I have to say, actually, in my own life, too, I've had to exercise my right because I've wanted to use my deep pain and my cavern of bullshit that I came from to say, I can't, I can't, mm -hmm. you have to give me an out because I can't and I'm angry. And I'm going to get drunk tonight because I'm angry. I'm in pain. So I'm going to work it out this way. And you have no idea what it feels like. I could go on and on yeah, and on with all of the excuses until finally the pain yeah. was overtaking me and I couldn't take the pain anymore. And for me, it was wanting to pop that bubble of pain that kind of led me on. But um, I do hear what you're saying. It's hard in, in the beginning of my life. It was so tucked away when I was. 18 to 35, my abuse, it was kind of there, but really it wasn't because I was yeah. raising children and it was really on the back burner. And I lived with a very abusive man. And so I was always running around serving him and cooking dinner. And by mm -hmm. the time I got done, Jody didn't exist, which was the whole point. <laughs> I yeah. didn't want to exist. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's more complicated than that, but certainly as we get older, we do learn uh, the distinctions of that or where um, I just kept going more alone. You guys, the older I got, the more I was alone. And I got into counseling because I didn't know how to have relationships because I'd never seen what it looked like. And yeah. I kept picking bad relationships. Yeah. But I think, I think in general, we all hit our rock bottom. I think so. whether it was from addiction, whether it was, you know, just a, a level of pain that we just couldn't handle anymore and couldn't, couldn't keep down, like you said, Jody. Exactly. you know, so I think exactly. it's, it's all that similar thing, but you don't, you don't look at this, at this sexual abuse, unless you, by God have to, I mean, I this agree. Is so it's so difficult and so painful, but yet I think, I think it's that scale, you know, the pain of holding it down versus the pain of looking at it. And at some point, the pain of looking at it looks better than the holding it down. You know, I think our subconscious right. is looking for that. And then you, you start getting better. And so that's really a miracle in our lives when we start, you know, looking, looking at it. I think it's true. And, and the thing is, is that I want to do is I want to be sure to leave a lot of grace around that because we really mm -hmm. are a mess in our mind. We are, the convictions can't be so strong when you're so confused. You don't even know how to get out of the paper bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I really want to leave a lot of grace for that because yes. I don't want to act like, Oh, you, you know, I knew and I didn't do what was right. A lot of times, like when I talked about that story about cheating on my husband after three months, you know what, you guys, after I'd been beaten for 18 years, I didn't know any different. And God is my witness. No. I just went. People can believe that or not, but that's, we are on autopilot. Oh yeah. And, and because I was then hurt by him, I didn't do it again because of course I knew it was wrong, but then I feared him. And so then I just took my prison gear and gave it to him and then just showed up in his prison. Right. So, yeah, yeah, you know, that's so right. No. And, and I don't blame anybody when they're not looking at it because I know, you know, I certainly didn't look at it for, you know, a uh, exactly. whole lot of even my adulthood and and um yeah it, it's not that you're saying to yourself gee it's here and I'm just not going to face it you're just living you know you're just coping right. as best you can and getting through day by day until exactly. you can you know? exactly and you know Kevin I guess that's the thing that I I want to hear or I want your heart to understand too, is because of this, this horribly graphic abuse, sexual abuse that you received from your father that commingled in everything good in your life. And so I just always love to bring that grace because God is also full of grace and love. Like it, the, the end result of everything he does is say, 
I get it, son. Just like you, he brought you understanding for your father, that understanding for ourselves that I can forgive myself, which mm. actually that kind of tears me up because it's really hard to forgive myself for some of the things that I've done and for not being the mother that I could mm. have been. But to bring that grace and that love to those areas where yeah. we we really couldn't do better than we could do sometimes. Kevin, do you believe that that's true? I'm trying to find his mute button. Yeah. Carol, what do you think about that? Isn't it hard to forgive ourselves? I think it's the hardest thing. Yeah. And you know, and I don't know world. why, right? Like and I, I, think- I deal with that daily. I think that self-love that, you know, that is such an important movement that's going on now that I, I never really considered, I don't think in my life. Right. And, and I deal a lot with food addiction still. And I, and to, to love myself through that is so, so difficult. Carol, um, we all and- struggle with things always. I can do really good. And then I drink too much wine because I just want to let go. Like we all yeah. do. And let's not BS that we don't because. Yeah, that we I, don't. Right. Because that's right. just white knuckling life and it's not reality. And so that's the other beautiful thing to talk about. Right. But, but keep going every time what I'm learning to do with myself, if I wake up with a hangover, cause I've had one too many glasses of wine, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what I do? God loves you, Jody, and love yourself right now. Just yeah. because we have to just keep putting more good in instead yes. of like, we would just want to dump bad on, make ourselves feel condemnation. Only love mm-hmm. changes things. I, I am such a believer that condemnation doesn't change anything. Trying harder doesn't change anything, but pouring more good in does. Yeah. Does that, does and, that make and, sense? Yeah, absolutely. And forgiving yourself. It's yes. Why is that hard? I mean, I can, I can forgive everybody around me, but I, why, you know, forgive me myself. And we've all made horrible, horrible mistakes in our lives and done things for years and years that were not productive. And, and um, it's human nature, you know, and, and we're, we're all made imperfect, imperfectly, you know? Oh, aren't we are yeah. such imperfect? Yes. Creatures. Yes, but I, I, I think the one thing that really uh, protects me from being harsh on myself is to know that God knows my whole story yeah, even better yeah. than I do. You know, we talk about some of the abuse that we don't remember. Carol and I were talking mm-hmm. about both of our brothers coming to us and telling us that they'd done things to us. And while I remember some things, I don't remember at all. <clears throat> I really believe with everything in me that God knows my story better and he has such compassion and love. That's what changes me. Yeah, that, That's yeah. what makes me want to to live a healthier, better lifestyle. And, mm-hmm. you know, we all are going to struggle doing that, but, um, that compassion yeah. changes us, right? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's, yeah. And that, um, and like you say, forgiving what we participated in is really hard because it's so it hard. against our value system against everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would, wouldn't hurt my kids you know, in that way right. at all. And I, um, it's so hard to think I did this horrible stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, that That's one of the hardest things I think in recovery is, it is. It's really yeah, Kevin, just I... the sexual abuse, you know, just what yes. happened. Yeah. Are yeah, you there with us now, Kevin? <laughs> oh, his mic isn't working. Oh, okay. No. Oh boy. I think yeah, your mic technical, isn't working. Technical difficulties. <laughs> We're having t- and I really want to hear what yeah. he had to say about that. Cause it, yeah. it is a, it's a beautiful thing. I wonder, yeah. um, no, we can't hear you now. <laughs> What's this? signal I don't know that's okay you know what we can you guys we can get your his sound back on because we can cut this part out it's fine okay but yeah I think you know that it's very difficult to to see yourself as a child and how complacent you were you know how do you forgive how complacent we were and so why it's so hard why it's so important to be talking about it because we all were complacent, you, you know? know? And what's funny is I've heard some people say, I, I interviewed this one lady and she said, my father came home that day and I looked at him and I said, no, you're not going to do it again. And he never did it again to her. Wow. And I thought, 
oh my gosh, it never even occurred to me to say that because mm -hmm. I, my, I, my asker was so broken. <laughs> mm -hmm. I couldn't ask for anything. You know what I mean? No. no. And so I, I, um, I've not been hard on myself, but I'll tell you, Carol, I've heard a few people say that, um, even Kevin has a story about that where mm -hmm. his father asked him to go one step further when he gets older and he says, no, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think, boy, that never even entered my mind to say no, because I didn't yeah. have a choice. I didn't and, have a choice. It, it also gets to these really are not powerful men. These are, oh, are people that are abusing. They may look exactly. powerful, they, right? They look yes. strong or angry or, and were terrified. But yes. some of them you might be able to just push over. And, and so, <laughs> so you know, true. You my know, dad was five, eight and a buck 55 when I was a kid, maybe. Yeah. You know, that's funny. My father was too. Uh, he was yep. just about five, eight and a thin yep. little guy, but, but I think, you know, not even physically standing up to them, but who knows, maybe if I had really stood up and said something, he would have right. just tottered away. We, and we don't know that, but we don't know that Kevin, yeah. are you back with us? Can we hear you now? Oh my God. See, I, I had this brainstorm that I was going to switch over to my laptop, but it didn't go so successfully. Well, you know what? It looked oh, great. Just, you look great on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have just left it like it was. That's okay. Yeah, um, there was something I wanted to say, but I lost my thought. You guys had hit on a good something. Well, what we were but, talking about was that compassion for ourselves and how God knows our entire story and that it's his love uh, that changes us. And he does know that we get lost in our story. And sometimes we're doing the best that we can. I really think that that's true. You know, like the time yeah. after that I left, I was saying, and, and went home with that man. Well, that was wrong. And did I know the difference? Yes. I was so in compliance. I really did just leave with him because I didn't know any better. I mean, it's mm -hmm. weird. Yes, I knew it was wrong, I mean, but I just went. <laughs> and you so the, 18, the, the it, the dysfunction really becomes your normal, it you does. know, and, and it does. people and don't understand it if they haven't been in that. They don't, they don't exactly. get it. Now, I, this is what I wanted to say. I don't know why God makes me this transparent like this. I don't, I don't like it, but I have to be obedient. One of the guilt, one of the things that kept me in that was the guilt, the fear and the condemnation of knowing that what I was doing is wrong. And when I say guilt, nobody talks about this part, but sex feels good. Mm. Oh, so yeah. even though right. I was doing ungodly things with right. the person that I should have never been in that situation with, there was an aspect of it that felt good. 100%. And yep. I never wanted to be honest with myself and say that because I'm not, I'm not agreeing with the violation of a son and a father, but it feels good to be touched. Mm -hmm. It feels good to have an orgasm. It feels good to do sexual things. Right. So that was a whole, you know, that was something that I had to be honest with myself mm -hmm. and said there was an aspect of it that I liked, even though it was as perverse as it was, who doesn't like to be touched and so on and right. so forth. So I had to forgive. I'm I'm going somewhere with this. With all that guilt and all the shame and the secrecy and the victimization, I had to not only forgive my father, but I have to forgive myself mm -hmm. for the roles that I played in it. And then remember, I had to take authority over that because I didn't want to become the person that he was. Remember, I had the little incident. So in the back of my mind, I had to always, I'm not going to say fight because I really didn't have a struggle with it because I always dated my own age. But I became a master manipulator. Mm -hmm. I understand I'm that. <laughs> yep. Any man that I wanted, nine out of ten, there might be a few, a few failed attempts on the records. 
But nine out of 10, I would do whatever it took to get them, buy them weed, get them drunk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even going to go into all the tactics, but. Women have a, a whole tool belt too. Yeah. <laughs> it was a 90% successful mission. Mm -hmm. So I realized, you know, in all my, in all my gettings and in all my conquests, I was never, but I also realized that I had toxic traits, you know, so I oh, couldn't, yes. I couldn't really look down on my father because in a way I exhibit those same characteristics, maybe not abusing kids, but abusing grown men, taking advantage of them when they're drunk and, you know, the gay for pay guys and mm -hmm. oh, it's a whole laundry list, but mm -hmm. thank God. I'm out of that. Now. Right. And that, and that's exactly um, what were when you, you got, when you had technical difficulties, what we were talking about was finding that space and the place and the mercy because God's throne has all of those things to forgive ourselves and really mm -hmm. move in that forgiveness. Because I really believe the thing that changes us is love, right. And that constantly mm -hmm. pouring in of better you know, because we were talking about the the struggles that we all still have. And Carol talked about eating too much. I was talking about having, you know, two or three glasses of wine too much. Some, you know, all of these things that that we still struggle with because life is <laughs> we are broken humanity trying to just make it through this place. Yeah. And yeah. so I just like to bring, you know, that grace around it because mm -hmm. it's it's true. You know, I mean, we can try to white knuckle it and then, you know, it's not that about how many work. times it doesn't work. <laughs> So, and I, I love, I love, right. I love that. This is what's so beautiful about getting together with other warrior mm -hmm. survivors and, and just talking the truth about it. And I know that our conversations help other people because our vulnerability is something that, that millions of people cannot do. And I hear often, thank you so much for the courage to do it. Cause it does take courage. And I thank both of you guys for being here tonight and, you know, having the vulnerability oh, we have really, um, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. And I know that God is really using these conversations. The panels are really, um, successful. I've watched the numbers just grow and grow and grow. And so I think it's really beautiful to have a community where we come together and talk about this. So we are well at time. Um, I like to leave it with just a little bit. If you guys would like to, if, if you think that we left off anything tonight, this has just been a beautiful discussion. Um, Kevin will definitely have you back. I just love listening to you. It's so it, like oh, Carol said, yeah. we, we really honor that you have the courage to stand up because there's so yeah. few men that do. I mean, I've had, I've, I've interviewed a few of them, but I tell you, there are few and far between. And far when between. they, mm -hmm. when they do talk, but you know, what's interesting you guys is that I have more men save my videos uh, than women do. Um, wow. You can, I mean, if the name is so, so it seems like that. And and we also have a, a large following of men. So that tells me that where else are they going to go, right? For vulnerability. Yeah. And we, yeah. this is not a secret what we're doing because we were victimized. <laughs> we, you know what I mean? This is not, we need to change the vernacular when you get in a car crash and you break your leg. What do you do? You go tell everybody because it was such a violent act and you need oh. to share it. Oh. It's exactly the same thing with childhood sexual abuse. We need yes. to share it. Right. Cause it is a car crash. <laughs> it is. It's a terrible car wreck. The horrible oh, car yeah. wreck. Yeah. That's right. It's a horrible car wreck. Well, Absolutely. it was a pleasure, and uh, I really appreciated everybody's honesty and um, very good. Meet, and meeting you, Kevin, it was great. So. Thank you so much, Jody. Yes, absolutely. Kevin, do you have any closing words you'd like to leave? Uh, likewise, likewise. Great meeting you too, Carol and Jody. You. You know, you're my girl. Um, you know, I just, I just want people to know. I think what I started out saying in the very beginning, you know, a lot of people have experienced trauma in their childhood and they never talk about it. They never get the healing. You deserve to be free. Yes. You deserve to be happy. Yes. You deserve to live and rise above what has happened. And the, the two ways to do that is to forgive the offender. I know it's not easy. And to forgive yourself and choose to be happy, choose to live in freedom, choose to let the past be the past 
and know that you didn't have control as a child, but as an adult, you have the control. So if you want to be happy, you have to shift your mindset. You can't think like a victim and expect any different result. Mm -hmm. And the key is spirituality. And I'm not talking about new age and candles and floaty boaties and <laughs> or you know, religion. <laughs> I'm, I'm not no sage. Use the sage in your dressing. Amen. I'm talking about a bona fide relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the role to happiness, to deliverance, to peace. Everything that you've been searching for in the drugs, in the sex, in the alcohol, in the buying all these designer bags and all this luxurious stuff, it only brings a certain level of contentment. The only true peace is being spiritually grounded and to have a relationship with God. And I say that because when we leave this earth, the Gucci bag is not going with us. The boyfriend, the girlfriend is not going with us. The six room mansion is not going with us. So we have to live a life that will, um, that, you know, we have to live a life that when we die, we're going somewhere. Uh, even scientists will tell you that, that the soul, the, it never dies. So we're going somewhere. And I pray that you find that, it, you know, I pray that you have an encounter with the Lord so that you can make heaven your home. That's all I got. I love it. I love you both. You guys have a beautiful time. We're going to talk yeah. soon because we're going to do this again. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, ladies. God bless you. God bless.